Okay. So thank you. Uh, so I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me here and giving me the opportunity to present a new project that I'm developing at the moment in the Christophe Morel group in uh, in Montpellier in uh, BPMP. So I will try to find a pointer. So where is? No. Yeah, here. Okay. I'm fine. I found it. So uh, in uh, in France in Montpellier. So as you, as uh, everybody knows, uh, water is extremely important for plants, and then uh, water is taken up from the soil by the root system and by the roots, and then it's transported uh, actually to the to the leaves and uh, to the to the shoots uh, of this plant, for instance. So if we go back to the roots, then water has to be uh, taken up from the soil and has to be transported from the soil. Well, outer part to the uh, vascular tissue uh, through two main routes, so an upper plastic way between going th between the cells until the pericycle, and then uh, another way uh, that is going through the cells, and it's uh, that the symplastic uh, transport. And then this uh, symplastic transport is <coughs> sorry is um, mainly controlled by um, a class of protein that are aquaporins. So I will not go into details about aquaporins because if you have listened to Christophe uh, talk yesterday, you probably know a lot of, about aquaporins. But the question is that I wanted to to answer and uh, we want, we're interested in is what happened when you have drought, what drought is doing uh, in terms of uh, controlling root architecture and also is it uh, controlling aquaporins and then Oops. No? Okay. So it should be an arrow in between. Uh, and then the question is, uh, what happened? Are these uh, response coordinated or not? And then what's happening? So to analyze this, we started to work with Arabidopsis. I know some people will say that it's not a real plant, but it's a plant. <laughs> <laughs> so and then uh, for these experiments, we are starting, we are gro using plants grown in uh, hydroponically uh, culture. So again, I'm no I know that people will not say that's normal culture, but uh, we use hydropon hydroponics. And then we use uh, three, year three months old plants, uh, three weeks old plants, so quite adult for Arabidopsis. And then we apply water stress for five days. And uh, so the water deficit is induced by uh, PEG treatment. So that we use polyethylene glycol to induce the water to, uh, to, um, to, um, to modify water um, availability for the plant. And then uh, on this plant, then we analyze the root architecture. So you have here the root system architecture of uh, this hydroponically grown plant. And then we uh, measure the uh, water transport uh, capacity of this root system using this uh, pressure chamber system. So I will come back on that later on. And then the idea, so the horror is here, the idea is to see whether uh, these two response, well, whether both are responding or not, and then whether there is a, um, an interaction or coordination between these two responses. So let's go back to the results. So here you have the root system, or the, the a picture of the root system, and then what you do see is that first it's quite long, four meters long. So it's long time, uh, long time to analyze the root system architecture. Anyway, uh, so when you apply a different uh, level of water deficit, uh, so going from mild to more severe water deficit, I didn't say that at the beginning. So what we do see, we have a, a stimulation of uh, root growth, of total root uh, growth. So by around 20% stimulation. And then if you apply higher uh, level of PEG, then you start to, re to repress root development. So that's quite well known that when we have a severe water stress, then we are repressing root development. But uh, here what we show that when we have a very mild water stress, then we are stimulating root development. So we wanted to go a little bit further and understand what happened. And then we, dis we dissect the root system or we analyze more in detail the root uh, system architecture. And then we focus on different parts of the root. So here, for instance, uh, we will focus on the part of the roots that is produced after or during the, the water deficit treatment. So it's not so easy to follow, but uh, if we compare the images of the root system before and after the treatment, then you can track back uh, the, where the, 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 the primary root was. And also, when we transfer, when we start the treatment of the plant, then we do see, if you look carefully at the high magnific magnification, then you clearly see uh, a change in the root uh, shape that can be, uh, that, that's used to track uh, the, the newly formed part. Okay, and then we do the same 
for uh, lateral roots here. And then what, what happens if you analyze uh, root development in detail? So here it's the, the um, primary root length, or so here that is produced after the treatment. And what you do see is you have a, a repression of root development that is, well, significant but not so important for mild water stress, but that can be very uh, dramatic for a more severe water stress. And then we look at what hap what's happening in the lateral root, Oops, here. And then what you do see, you do not have the rep uh, repression, but you, you, st you see a stimulation of root growth in this area. So that means that the lateral root uh, growth is stimulated by mild water stress and then repressed by more severe water stress. So we went a little bit further and we analyzed the lateral root either on the primary root, so here, the lateral root that are here, so that the mean length of the lateral root that are produced in this part, and what you do see is that you have a stimulation of, ro of the root growth, and not only for mild water stress, but for a little bit more severe water stress also. So we have, a, again, a difference between the, 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 the root growth. And if you look at the, uh, the last one, which are the, lat the lateral roots on the lateral roots here, so second order lateral roots from this area, what you do see, and then you have a stimulation whatever the water stress level is. So that means that water deficit um, has a, well, has a dual effect on root development with a stimulation and then a repression for most of them. And, but the response is also depending of the type of the root, so it's different from the primary to lateral root, and also from the age of the root, so the, from the young and, the, and, uh, and the older lateral root. So that make a, a much more complex uh, image than what we were expecting. And we also did the same for the number of lateral roots, the density of lateral roots, uh, all parameters we analyzed, they follow exactly the same pattern. So that was interesting. And then, of course, as we are working on Arabidopsis, we had to go back to in vitro petri dishes because that's our favorite tool. We, do, we did the same experiment uh, in vitro uh, using younger seedlings uh, and then uh, use, applying a wider range of uh, polyethylene glycol or we also use other um, osmoticum uh, that's like sorbitol or KCL and uh, from all of them we had the same phenotype. Uh, so, yeah, I have to say that here again I draw the, this white line because we focus on the analysis also on the newly formed part that is uh, below this uh, white line. So, here is I just presenting the, letter, the, the total root length and what we do see here is that again, uh, like uh, what we had in, in hydropony, we have a stimulation for mild uh, water deficit and then repression of root development for more severe water deficit. So that, uh, that's interesting to, 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 see, to see that, uh, and it's not so frequent, that we have a very similar response to, between what, are, what we see in hydroponics and in vitro. And again, with young plants and uh, older plants. So that's very interesting because, well, most of the time when we are working on the on plate, plates like this one, uh, referees or people are complaining, well, that's not real plant, that's a very young plant. But here we do see that we have the same uh, kind of response. So that's quite interesting. And then uh, with these plates, we, 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 we have been able to go a little bit further and we analyze the primordia initiation and here you have the <clears throat> different stage of primordia development and what we saw, we were thinking that the, the increase in number of lateral roots was just due to a, a earlier emergence but no, it's also associated with a higher uh, primordia initiation so you see that here for the dif this different concentration of polyethylene glycol then we have a clear stimulation of primordia initiation so it's almost double uh, the, the, the level of initiation. Anyway, so that means that the water deficit the, and the mild water deficit have a strong effect on, on root development. And then the question we ask, well, we know that ABA is important uh, when, you apply, when you are interested in water stress response. Then we look at the, what's happening in terms of ABA. So we did some uh, QPCR analysis and then we, exp we analyzed the expression of several genes that are known to be uh, um, ABA regulated. And we also did some ABA quantification, even if it's not so easy in rabidopsis because you need quite a lot of material. But what we found that uh, ABA was uh, induced, or at least the expression and ABA quantification was also in, uh, ABA was also induced uh, proportionally to the level of water stress we apply. So we have a gradual induction of, uh, of ABA uh, accumulation. So, and then we were thinking, of, well, what happened uh, with ABA? Can we mimic the root phenotype we are seeing when we apply water, uh, water 
uh, deficit. And so for that, we apply different concentration of ABA. And so I have to point that we use very low concentration of ABA, much lower than what is usually used. So it's 15 to f uh, 50 nanomolar of ABA and not micromolar. And then we're using this very low concentration of ABA. Then we have been able to show that we can um, induce the, the well, we can stimulate root growth. So that was also recently published uh, by other groups. So that a ABA uh, is able to promote root development. And then we look at the elongation of roots and um, primordia, it's also the, the, the case. So to go a little bit further and confirm this uh, ABA effect, we look at the different mutants. So we work with uh, three different mutants. Uh, so, and yeah, so here we are. So, sorry, I forgot to say to say that we are back to hydroponics and not uh, in in vitro this this time. So we use uh, ABA2 mutant that is uh, deficient in biosynthesis of ABA. Uh, so it's not able to produce uh, well, is able to produce ABA but at a much lower level than than the wild type. So we also analyze. We also analyzed the SNRK2223 uh, double mutant that are um, uh, affected in the signaling, and we all analyzed uh, this mutant that is HAB ABI that is hypersensitive. So then here, what we do see that the, SN the double mutant, the ABA is not able to respond anymore, whereas the SNRK. Uh, is able to respond, but at a much lower extent than the wild type that you can see here, and the hypersensitive mutant is. Uh, not uh, able to uh, enhance or to see the to show the enhancement of the response because it's already uh, at, has already higher uh, growth than the than the wild type and then it's responding much faster and much stronger than the wild type. So that that really confirmed that ABA is involved. So let's go back to the second part uh, and I go a little bit faster. So here in this case we use uh, the pressure chamber probe. So and then this system, uh, uh, we put the, the root system in the chamber that is sealed. We apply pressure and then we can measure the flow. And then we can correlate the pressure with the flow and then uh, deduce the root hydraulic conductivity. Okay. And then what we did here is, uh, again, we apply different concentration of PEG. And then what we saw is that it's in uh, hydroponic again. And then what we do see is that uh, when we apply PEG, when inc we increase the, um, the, what the root hydraulic conductivity. And then for higher uh, level of stress, then we repress uh, root conductivity. And then if we, if we can block the aquaporin activity using some chemicals. And then, so that's what you see here. So when you block the aquaporin activity, so that the residual uh, water conductivity, and then you see that it's mainly the aquaporin dependent activity that is uh, stimulated by, by PEG application. And it's, uh, we did the same with ABA treatment. And again, what we saw is that ABA is able to stimulate uh, the aquaporin dependent part of the LPR. And again, with mutants, so we found that the ABA mutants are not able to stimulate the, 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 um, the aquaporin, um, the, the, the LPR when we apply a PEG, whereas uh, here you see the hypersensitive mutant that is already, that already have a much higher um, water conductivity and is well, it's not, you cannot st uh, stimulate, but uh, you, can, you are not repressing, and then you have to, to repress it, to, to have to, um, it's repressed at much higher concentration. Okay, so that's the conclusion is that, oops, uh, let's switch to the conclusion. <laughs> so that we have here that the water deficit has a dual effect on root architecture with a stimulation for low water deficit and then repression for higher water deficit. So, uh, I just point this one because I think that is in interesting for, for us. So that the seedlings and adult plants, well, I would say that the three weeks old plants are almost adults, have a similar response. So that's quite important to see that the mechanism or the things we are seeing at the young plant, they are also uh, true uh, for uh, later stages. And one of the very important thing is that the, the root adaptive response depend of the root type and the root age with the primary root that is more sensitive than lateral root and the second order lateral root that are less sensitive to, um, to a first order lateral root. So that makes sense because if you uh, think about a plant growing so that the primary root will not experience a dry soil but uh, and then the, the primary root will suck so water and then after that the root that will appear will 
develop in a much drier soil, so that means that they have to be less sensitive. So that has an important impact because uh, that, and that's one of the perspectives that we are interested in, is to, to try to understand why uh, this, uh, where is this difference in sensitivity is coming from? Is it a different signaling? Is it a different sensing mechanism? Is it a, well, a different mechanism of response so that will be important and that can also have uh, importance, uh, great importance for agricultural pr perspective because then we can manipulate the, the sensitivity of the, of the different routes. And so, and then co to come back to the water hydraulic conductivity, so we found that also the uh, hydraulic conductivity is modulated and, uh, by, by water deficit with a stimulation and repression. And we found that ABA uh, uh, is controlling both the adaptive response and the hydraulic response to water deficit. So now the next step will be to try to understand uh, how it works. And also one perspective that would be extremely interesting is to see whether the hydraulic response is diff to water deficit is different according to the difference uh, uh, to the, the different root types either uh, primary root or lateral roots do they have a different uh, response okay so before finishing, so I would say that most of the work have been done by Miguel Rosales, who was a postdoc uh, in uh, in our group, and thank you for your attention. <laughs>